Huang. Uh, she is going to talk about uh, dust evolution in illustrating G across cosmic time. So we shall start. Because, as you see in the Wells talk, and also the, as you may know, that this will affect our uh, galactic evolution and our understanding of the galaxy. So uh, let me uh, give you some example of it. Uh, first is uh, the dust will modify the galaxy spectral energy density energy distribution, the SED. Like in this uh, in this uh, figure, like. The intrinsic SED that we love, the, the galaxy SED we love us is like this, this uh, dash plot. And the uh, SED with dust is like this. So you can see the SED is changed a lot after it, uh, if there is a dust present. So that is the absorption in the UV and also the thermal radi radi radiation from the dust in the far infrared that will change uh, the SED significantly. And this effect are due to some. Uh, uh, caused by some of the dust property, including the dust composition, the brain size distribution, and the, also the dust geometry. And the next one is uh, the dust, and especially the brain size distribution, can affect the formation of the mo molecular gas. This is the work by Chen Li Xin in 2018. Like she found that the uh, when she put it in different brain size distribution in a simulation, she found the the small grains can produce more molecular gas than the large grains. So you, you can see, so yeah, that is uh, the result like, that, that the grain size distribution can affect our galaxy, ga galaxy evolution. So what I'm going to do, I'm using the dust processing model to uh, model the, uh, to see how the grain size distribution evolve in a, in a illustrious TNG. So this is uh, my dust model. My model including five mechanisms. The uh, so first is the cell dust production. That is the dust can be produced by the AGB star and the supernova. And uh, the other four are structuring, calculation, accretion, and sputtering. So I don't have the time to go into detail of all these uh, all these mechanisms, but. Uh, I, I want to mention two things. One is that uh, these mechanisms are dependent on the environment, the ice and environment. Like the calculation and accretion happen in a dense uh, interstellar medium, while the shattering prefer to happen in a diffuse uh, ice and medium. And also the, the second thing is the size, the ball size. The calculation and accretion will produce large grains, and the shattering and sputtering, these two processes, will produce more small grains. So, and so this is our dust mechanism, and we are we will put it in our model. So what's uh, what's uh, what is the specialty of our model? One thing is uh, we treat our galaxies. Uh, we, we take the galaxy information like interstellar median, uh, uh, no, the gas mass, the stellar mass, metallicity, all the things from the illustrious TNG simulation, and we build a uh, one long we build a one model for each galaxy and uh, and build a and set uh, 64 dust uh, dust beam, dust size beam for each galaxy and evolve these uh, galaxies along the merger tree. So in this by doing so we can include the gas accretion and the galaxy merger in our model. So the idea is that we initialize our galaxy as the our, we initialize our galaxies at the the end, at the high ratio end of the merger tree, and then we evolve the each galaxy along the the tree, and then uh, merge them 
and also merge the dust uh, size distribution and also the the uh, abundance depend on the gas mass and also evolvement until they reach the uh, reach zero. Yeah, this is briefly our model. So uh, my surgery is like we took the fr the, for the first uh, result, the preliminary result that we do our model, we test our model on the Milky Way like galaxies. Uh, so we can compare our result with the uh, observation more easily. So uh, we we were first uh, we first select some uh, Milky Way like galaxy from the illustrious TNG, the largest uh, simulation box, the 300 megaparsec box, and later we took the all the necessary quantity from the illustrious TNG to put it in the model, and then we can analysis that we, we produce the SED and the analysis there. Sorry, nicely we produce the grain size distribution and also the dust form abundance from our model, and later we do the analysis on the extinction curve. So here's uh, our selection sample. Like, uh, we select the Milky Way like galaxy based on this paper. Uh, so we choose a star formation, a specific star formation rate and uh, constraint the uh, stellar uh, mass to select, select 206 galaxies from illustrious TNG. And we can see that their metallicity and the star formation rate is roughly similar to the Milky Way mission. And so the first first thing is like we uh, we first met validate our model with the dust and the metallicity scaling relation. So on this plot, I plot the the x-axis is the uh, gas phase metallicity. The y y-axis is the dust to gas ratio in the entire galaxies. And uh, the these black dots are the observation taken from uh, this paper in 2014. So um, we plot all the galaxies and uh, and also the galaxy along the the merging, uh, along along the main branch at different ratio on these plots. We can see our galaxy roughly follow the observed um, dust to metallicity scaling relation. So this is the first way um, that is show that our model can can predict the the observed dust metallicity scaling relation quite well. So second, we are going to a uh, detail about our results. So we produce uh, this, on this plot, I plot the uh, grain size distribution of our galaxy at different ratio from ratio 3 to ratio 0. So at first, the, the size distribution are dominated by the large grain here. And this bound is caused by the stellar dust production. And later on, all the other uh, dust formation mechanism involved, like um, the sheltering combination uh, and other effect that can change, modify the shape to, like can uh, move some small grain into a large grain and some large grain into a small grain. And by this, um, you can see the small grain, the abundance of a small grain great, uh, increase gradually, and they reach the uh, the abundance of the total dust, the total dust abundance reaches the, um, the most um, at ratio one, and also you see this peak here, and later on it decreases a little bit at ratio zero. And this slope here, I call this slope here, it, this is the, uh, the MR slope, which like people believe this is the size distribution of the Milky Way like galaxy. So we can see the this slope is roughly consistent with our calculation at ratio zero indicate that we can we uh, uh, reproduce a Milky Way like uh, grain size distribution. So another thing that we found here is that uh, to produce this kind of form we need a lot of uh, we need a sufficient uh, understanding of the calculation. So th this form is mainly caused by uh, the different stream uh, uh, sorry this form is mainly caused by the calculation. So uh, yeah, so as I show here, like the calculation is a crucial process to reproduce this kind of slope in the grain size distribution. Yeah. And also this one calculation, as you may remember in the previous slides, that is, uh, this effect is happen in a very dense uh, interstellar medium. So if we cannot, uh, if we ha uh, cannot uh, well uh, reproduce a uh, dense size media in the simulation, this part will be might be missing or be, maybe underestimate. 
So that is the crucial part. And also, we based on our grain size distribution, we calculate the extinction curve. So, yeah, based um, um, yeah by the assumption by taking into account the dust composition taken from Jen's paper, and also uh, we assume the uh, we uh, apply the mean theory to calculate these plots. So as you can see again, like the rich zero curve here is probably cover probably cover the measurement from the uh, Milky Way extinction curve. This is the past result in 1992. So uh, yeah, and for more detail, please refer to our MRS RS paper, which is just being accepted. And last, I want to introduce more like um, SED because this is the part that people can do with the with the NEP or ACRI or any other mid infrared and far infrared observation. So this is a work done by Chong Yin Zhang, our uh, undergraduate student. Uh, so he, she also put a post on a, she will also put a post on a Slack. So he, in her result, he calculated the, the SED based on our grain size resolution and also by a proper assumption of interstellar radiation field. So in this plot, the, the, the blue one is the, the calculation, and also the, the dot here is the Milky Way, Milky Way galaxies, the measurement from the Milky Way galaxies. So, so, so like uh, our SED is roughly cover the observation. So for more detail, please refer to her poster on the Slack. And thank you for, and thank you for your interest and for your listening. Any question? So we have a question in Slack uh, from Matt Malkan. The question is, was there any difference you found in the spatial distribution of those small grain and the large grains? Uh, in our paper, uh, uh, in our work, we treat the one zone model. So there's no spatial, spatial uh, re resolved structure there. So so currently, we, we, we haven't released because it, it took a lot of simulation time. Yes, so in our model, we, don't we, we can materialize it. Oh, we have another question. So I think it's originated from the previous slide. The what is the S2 bonds at redshift 3? So co-articulation. Yeah, previous. Not, not this one. This one. Not this one. Not co Here. Here. That one. So there are two bumps at redshift 3, right? So what what condition determine those two bumps? You mean this uh, this mm -hmm. one? So this bump is many uh, is de determined by the stellar dust production because okay. we believe that the AGB the star the dust pr pr produced by the AGB star is dominate is a large grain dominate. So this is the shape of the stellar dust production, and this part is uh, so this part is a little bit uh, complicated. So it main, mainly due to the so the all the other process like uh, sh uh, shattering and and uh, the uh, sputtering effect like remove some of the large grain hmm. from here to here. Yeah. So the this still uh, the larger bump is going the peak peak position is going to decide the uh, relative zero position. You mean this that is taken hmm. from the uh, some uh, observation like. Uh, from from observation, we, we see that the large, uh, the, the stellar dust production in many bumps this one. It's the nearby, from the nearby observation. So I'm, I'm, I want to know why the peak at relative zero is at that size. You mean at this one? Mm. Uh, so at late time, the size distribution is not no longer dominant by the so so at at relative uh, three, the dominant the dominant process is stellar dust production. Mm. So this is a peak of the stellar dust production. But as the shift zero and also the shift one, the the dominant process is no longer the stellar dust production because mm -hmm. at this moment there are many dust in the galaxies and all the other uh, dust formation and evolution mechanism can get involved. And so for here, this bump um, is mainly, mainly, mainly from, from our simulation and analysis, is mainly due to the calculation. So that means the the ratio of the coagulation and then sputtering and those balance is going to decide the peak position. Is, yes. is that correct answer? Yes. Thank you. 
Okay, I think we should stop here. Uh, maybe you can have question and answer to this like, you know, later. So. Okay, let's move on to the next speaker. Hiroyuki uh, Hirashita-san uh, will talk about uh, theoretical understanding of dust as C 